now we are going to focus on the ethical issues related with the civil society organization. Now, when we understand the civil society organizations represent the interests of the human um, beings and also non-human entities, then the ethical issues starts with first recognizing the CSO's uh, stakes in the what they are claiming. And this becomes a problem majorly with the promotional uh, types of CSOs, because when it is a so, CSO which is uh, sectional CSO means representing the views and interests of a particular section of the society, then they can establish easily their stake by telling like these are the my constituency. But when it, uh, so they can est easily establish their stake by claiming like these are their constituency, but uh, when it is a promotional CSO, because the membership um, belongs to the based on the uh, similar in, um, interest shared by the members and it is membership is by is from the outsiders and they are representing a particular issue at hand, then to establish their stake, um, it it's becomes difficult, because they cannot directly point to like I am representing this part of the society. But in many cases, it so happens like the CSOs tend to self declare themselves as a stakeholders in a particular issue by issuing statements, launching campaigns and initiating some kind of action towards the uh, corporation. And then it becomes difficult for the organization uh, to understand whether they are truly uh, the stakeholders or not and whether to recognize them as a stakeholders or not. Self we have to understand self declaring does not necessarily lead to recognition. And so, what how then the organization is um, going to understand who are my stakeholders? We have already discussed this earlier when we are um, uh, talking of uh, stakeholder um, like selections based on like if there are uh, four or five um, CSOs who are coming, uh, coming and claiming at the same point of time. I am your stakeholder and um, you have to answer to my uh, needs and uh, demands. Practically, it is like um, not possible for the organization to answer to the demands of all the CSOs at a single point of time, because there are limitation of time and of course, resources are there. And so, a selection has to be made based on whom, whom do I uh, select as the CSO or groups of CSOs whom I am going to listen to and answer to their demands and uh, try to see what they are speaking about. So, in order to do that, the instrumental theory of the stakeholder as we discussed earlier, this comes to help. The normative theory does not uh, um, help us to that extent in selecting the CS, uh, CSOs and like, like narrowing down and finding out who are important for me. The instrumental theory, if you remember, it talks of the CSOs selection based on 
like what is the importance of issues that they are talking of and is that issue how much does uh, it affect the my business or how much do I get affected by if I am not responding to their needs and all and so how whether it is directly connected and what is the importance of their mm, the things that they are talking of and mm, where and how much power that the CSO has uh, so that if we are not listening to it um, then maybe the long run the organization is in trouble. So, some of these subjective uh, considerations judgments also are uh, required in selecting who are the CSOs whom we are going to respond to. But with a word of caution definitely over here is ignoring a particular CSO may have a detrimental effect in long term um, or a long term consequences, because a CSO which may be weak today, whom you may feel like is not an representing an in important issue now, but if specifically for the promotional groups of CSOs, so they may go out to the media and the publicity, negative publicity of the organization like we are our interests have not been taken care of, we have not been given proper recognition and all may be damaging to the you know, reputation of the organization and may have a long term detrimental effect. So, then how can this recognizing C CSOs be done? It is a very rigorous task, it requires lot of patience and lot of understanding good judgment to understand this, but of course, it may start with instead of just ignoring some CSOs, the initial step may start with to listening to their problems. So, if somebody's problems are listened to, it gives uh, uh, it, it definitely sends a message like the organization is respecting the um, interest of the entity may be human or may be non-human about which whose interests the particular CSOs are representing and try to find out actions like what corrective actions may be taken um, for anything that is done in a wrong way by the organization. So, opening up a dialogue or trying to listen to the what the um, you know, CSOs are trying to represent may help to understand the CSO problems and then maybe make a logical priority setting like based on their urge, urgency need and maybe the you know, connectivity with the business and the power you take up certain issues first and then a second and third and so some planning is done to answer to the needs and the you know the interests of the groups like the which the CSOs are representing, but ignoring CSOs may have a detrimental effect. So, mm, the different uh, tactics taken by CSOs to make themselves heard to the organizations, the corporates are could be like indirect actions and could be direct actions. So, 
when you are talking of indirect actions, these are like they are uh, like uh, focusing, they are um, publicizing certain news about the um, organization, certain reports about the organization, which may have uh, um, some sometimes be providing misleading information. So, these are um, indirect actions which may affect if not done with the honest intention the reputation of the organization. Violent direct action involves um, like like um, fights may be um, breaking the damaging the properties of the organization. So, putting on fire or something like that. So, which um, are often in illegal, but it generates you know like the most of the publicity, but we have to understand when the like if it is an uh, communication of two responsible parties with each other, then is this action uh, at all uh, civil uh, can be termed as civil action at all. So, the we are here focusing more on the non-violent direct actions in terms of like demonstrations and marches, protests and boycotts, then non-violent sabotage and disruptions, stands, picketing, occupations. These are some types of um, like non-violent actions, which are chosen uh, to represent the um, CSOs um, to draw the uh, represent the CSOs and draw the um, attention of the organizations corporation to the issues that the uh, CSOs are trying to communicate to the corporation and want the corporation to act upon to um, take care of the issues and lessen the harm provided by the corporate's actions. Now, we will discuss about one of the uh, techniques, which is very important technique, which is called boycotts. In boycott, and it is an attempt by one or more parties, by one or more parties to achieve certain objectives by urging individual consumers to refrain from making uh, selected purchases in the marketplace, maybe for the target um, organizations chosen. So, boycott the products or services um, of that particular organization to support the cause of the CSO for the cause that they are promoting. There are four different purposes for boycotts like instrumental boycotts, catalytic boycotts, expressive boycotts and punitive boycotts. We will go to the details of explaining each one of these boycotts. Instrumental boycotts uh, is aimed to force the target to change, target here is the organization to change a specific policy. Goals may be very clear such as the uh, protest against the uh, policy, the introduction of better conditions etcetera. So, it is instrumental in getting something that is why this world instrumental. 
second we are talking of a catalytic um, boycott. In catalytic boycott, it seeks to raise awareness about the company's actions and policies. So, the boycott itself is a means to generate more publicity, it helps in generating more publicity which is either for the CSO or for the broader campaign of, of action against the company. So, it, it is catalyst, it acts as a catalyst in and like and, uh, in something which is happening, it more it adds maybe more intensity to it. That is why this is called a uh, catalytic boycotts. Expressive boycotts are more general forms of protest uh, that effectively just communicate uh, a general displeasure about the target company. This form tends to be characterized by a more vague goals, since their focus is more on the CSO and the consumers registering their disapproval. So, this is an expressive boycott. So, it is a it is where the CSO is speaking about certain issue and the consumers are coming and expressing their views on the target company. So, punitive mm, boycotts seek to uh, it seeks to punish the target company for its actions. Therefore, rather than just communicating about the displeasure, the uh, this type of boycotts, in this type of boycotts the CSOs actively involves in cause the CSO for it cause the firm a harm like um, aiming usually aimed by erosion of sales. So, these could be the four these could be the four different purposes for boycotts, when you are talking of instrumental boycotts, it is geared towards uh, changing a specific policy. Catalytic boycott may be more geared towards gaining publicity for the CSO and the issues that it is talking of, uh, creating a broader campaign. It is expressive uh, boycott is where the consumers are coming and expressing their displeasure about certain issues, um, but it does not have any such specific goal. And when it is a punitive boycott, it is the CSO which gets actively involved in causing certain harm to the target firm, mainly through reduction in the uh, sales or erosion of sales. However, we have to understand like irrespective of the um, CSOs calling for a boycott or uh, not, it is actually the active participation of the um, consumers, the extent and um, intensity of the active participation of the consumers will determine whether um, these goals are actually met or not. So, a number of uh, factors will define whether the consumers will be um, joining and maintain boycotts or not, including the may be the degree of effort involved 
in switching to another alternative, the whether the alter other alternatives are present or not, the appeal of the boycotted uh, product to the consumer, social pressure and the mm, likelihood of success like yes, if we are boycotting then maybe ultimately it is going to improve in the uh, product or for the issue that we are talking of. So, in general more boycotts are called, but usually um, like uh, less becomes uh, successful. So, like for uh, some of the publicized success stories, there could be hundreds of stories which are not successful. So, this of course, is directed to the uh, question like um, of which constituencies are exactly the CSOs supposed to be representing, then whose cause are they supposed to be representing, whom they are accountable to and what is the and how they would be advancing regarding their te techniques taken. We will be discussing this in details when we are discussing about CSO accountability. But here we will try to see like some of the um, target company and maybe the main issues and outcomes mm. like issues we were like suppose uh, if we talk of the KFC issue the people for the ethical treatment of animals beta they took up the issue of cruelty towards chicken in the KFC supply chain and like mm, it has led to some improvement in practices, um, the, but the campaign was called off in Canada due to new animal welfare plan, but continues in US, UK and several other countries. So, mm, but when like for body shop by organizer, CSO organizer uh, like nature watch, the issues were sale of body shop to L'Oreal which is part owned by Nestle, main issues involved were L'Oreal's use of animal testing. A nature watch, um, nature watch press release claimed that the body shop had lost millions in revenue in just one year due to the campaign. No change in policy was however done in L'Oreal. So, there are like you can understand the protests are there, boycotts are there, uh, campaigns are there, different different issues have been taken up, but all the issues may have not like been either resolved in the way uh, by the CSOs that they started the boycott with or uh, maybe some actions have been taken, but not to the fullest level which the CSOs were expecting. So, that brings us to the discussion of the CSO accountability where we will try to focus on the issues like the um, whom are the CSOs accountable to about their actions, whose interest do they need to speak about. So, and whose issues are they supposed to be representing and um, 
what way they are answerable to these groups of people bodies whose interest they are representing. So, the here we are, so we are mainly trying to discuss about the stakeholders of the CSO itself. The stakeholders of the CSO are generally the beneficiaries mainly because it is to answer their interests the CSO has uh, to uh, represent their interests, the CSOs have been formed. So, the beneficiaries, the donors, the members, the employees, government organizations, other CSOs and general public at large who the CSO who support their ideals are the main stakeholders. Recently, however, there are a number of growing organizations similar to CSOs being initiated within the business itself, who are um, taking care of the responsibilities of the organizations towards the larger society. So, the most of the like mm, mm, issues come up uh, regarding the mm, accountability of the mm, CSO to their, uh, most of the issues come up regarding the accountability of the CSOs to their beneficiaries mm. and the ethical issues that uh, become a part of the debate because uh, it has been found in some cases the CSOs in developed countries is where who who are purporting to represent the interest of uh, those in the uh, low less economically developed countries have been accused of imposing you know their own agendas on local people without adequately understanding their uh, situations and needs, but this is due to like maybe because if it is the donors money that is targeted, then there are a group of donors who would like to donate money for certain causes which are maybe close to their heart and maybe not give donations for certain causes. So, if the CSO's own survival is the question uh, which is guiding them at the back of their mind they may pose like they are taking up agendas of local people, but it may so be the case like actually they are speaking of their own agendas and posing like these are the agenda of the local people even without understanding them or trying to consult them and find out whether it is their true need or not. So, mm. The involvement of the beneficiaries in, so where it comes to like the uh, CSO donor interest receives the higher priority. So, the less of involvement of the beneficiaries in the agenda setting, target setting and then finding out how to work on it. So, um, always like the search for money need for financial support as told because it is the donors money they, they try to give priority to the donors interest. So, and that is why this forcing of agendas and in many cases there are lack of effective mechanisms 
for the beneficiaries to give feedback um, on the uh, CSO's performance like how they are actually performing. So, that brings to question the ethical intention of some of the CSOs like whose cause they are actually representing. It is, is it their own cause for because now you have seen like from informal type of organization it has somewhere become formalized and it is functioning like professional institutes and so the survival of it so the um, it, it becomes like um, is a concern for the CSOs and because they thrive on the donors money in order to give pri primary interest what the donors are ready to donate for they may try to speak about those issues only or selectively look for those issues and speak for those or they may force these agendas on the local people also even if it is not there. So, there lies the ethical dilemma and for this there needs to be some like the when you are talking of business and CSO relationship and when you were talking of like the selection of the CSO and maybe finding out who is truly acting for the cause that they are telling self declaring that they are representing this selection requires a rigorous type of research in to and study to find out who are they really accountable to the beneficiaries mainly for whose cause they are self declaring like they are representing. In the next section, we will move towards globalization and the civil society organizations. In the context of globalization, what the changing roles of the civil society organizations. Thank you.